everyone and welcome to my channel so today i'm actually introducing a brand new interview that i did with the cast of these four wars i had such an amazing experience absolutely loved the day and i really hope that you all do enjoy watching this interview if you do please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like like comment share and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already and also don't forget to watch the film itself because i've seen it it is absolutely amazing and I really did enjoy it. So please enjoy this interview. Well, hey guys, I'm Kathleen, nice to meet you. Hi Kathleen, how are you? So one at a time, why don't you all introduce yourselves and talk about your role in the film? Okay, so my name is Callum Allen. Um, I wrote the film, produced the film, and star in the film for These Four Walls. I'm Grace Coulson Harris, um, and I'm an actor in the film. <laughs> <laughs> Because when I got a chance to do this, 
I hadn't been to London for two years. Yeah. So obviously it was a big challenge for me to come out of my comfort zone and do it all over again. Exactly. Oh, today. Yeah. 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 Come in. That was great. Thank you. So how did you all find? Well, we pretty much just answered this question. But how did you all find your time working through lockdown? Like, um, did you? What activities did you all manage to do? Like, writing. Yeah. Like you said, dog yeah. as well. Instantly, I think with the forest as well and these four walls, we really wanted to include that. There was such a key element because, yes. because there was nothing to do people were getting into nature so much more. And that was, and it was also, I think me and Callan talked about this a lot. It was like the kind of sneaky meetups that you might do with friends, which kind of felt like you were almost like, <laughs> <laughs> like you were a kid again because yeah. everyone was just hanging out mm. in the park, especially when things got a bit more free. I think one, one thing for me was um, exploring. Because yeah. where I lived, I didn't realise I lived like five minutes from the River Thames. Mm. And all this time, like, when I would leave my house, I'd go one way. And then when you had a chance to announce yeah. myself, yeah. I was like, oh, there's a golf course in my house. Oh, the River yeah. Thames yeah. yeah. And then, you know, it's that thing of exploring my community, exploring my area. Mm. And that, that was really fun to do. Um, Walking, I, I got started with the walking, but I realised I better get a bike because I can go further. Yeah, so I bought a cheap bike. Yeah. You it, yeah. got, it got stolen in the back, so oh, I didn't knock yeah. it out properly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think uh, cycling as well was really helpful. Like, it, it, it graduated. It graduated to cycling as well. Yeah. But you know what? I think it was nice by lockdown as well. I think it was super nice to feel human again. I know it sounds really cheesy yeah. and cliche, but we really had a chance to connect to people. Like, even my dogs, for instance, obviously. I know it sounds ridiculous, but we've all got dogs, we've all got pets and stuff. But you know, you've got your day to day life, whether it be work, mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Yeah. So, like, dogs are loving it in lockdown. Yeah, they're yeah. 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 like getting walks yeah. and getting all the attention yeah. as well. Yeah, they're so. all <laughs> slow down yeah. as well. Yeah. Like, you are constantly, especially when you live in London, like, it's such a fast pace right. that you're living yeah. at. And mm -hmm. that was, I was very lucky that in the first lockdown, I hadn't had anyone that was affected by COVID uh, in my immediate family or anything. So, it was a time, yeah, it was quite a like, peaceful time in a way, yeah, which is same. mad because there was so much chaos and like I, I just watched Help, which is on was on the channel for the mm. other week, the other day, and like it really, it really is an eye-opening thing to what people were going through mm. outside mm. of your own four yeah. walls, but like on the other side it was an awful time, so yeah. like I am really lucky and, and have like a lot of gratitude for how mm. my perspective on it being mm. as it is. Mm. But it's interesting that Gracie said there in regards to um, the silence becoming so loud. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like where you're isolated, it's like, like you're now so aware, it's like it's amplified. Mm. Yeah. And you become aware so much of all the little details around you and of nature and your family mm. and your pets. Like, it, you know, everything seems to be amplified in that. So, yeah, I definitely connect you appreciate it even more. Like, I stayed so. at my nan's for the first lockdown. Let me see, I'm on seven, so uh, I didn't see my mum or my siblings or anything like that. Maybe, maybe about. Two months or so, and I was at home with my yeah. nan upstairs. She lives by herself, so I didn't really want to leave her yeah. there or go out or anything like that. So for me, I feel like from, from a big family, it's always quite fast paced. One of them was FaceTiming them, or then one of them did, did get to see them again. It was so nice to kind of appreciate them more and kind of not take what you've got for granted, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do on a day to day. So I think yeah. that's really nice to be able to just appreciate your loved ones and give you hope for us. Yeah, as well, because we obviously filmed this after the first lockdown. We haven't gone into another lockdown yet. No. And personally, for me, my the difference, like from what I was talking about there, of like it slowing down and being really peaceful. This second and third lockdown was a really hard time. Same. A really yeah. hard. Like that November lockdown was hard, and then we came out, and then going from Christmas into what yeah. April. She so started thinking it's never gonna end. It was, yeah. it was a relentless thing and it kind of, I lost all of the sort of novelties of it being like yeah. this really nice and it was more like okay this is really hard now because this is, is this what life is going to be and like even now we're coming into winter and I'm like well, is there going to be another lockdown yeah. and like, it's a dread now so I think the first one was really unique in terms of yeah. it was really like yeah. new and could have all those things but definitely Second and I wonder if you'd done the film after the third lockdown, what yeah. it would have been like after yeah, the experience of 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. I don't know who would have done that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, what top tips would you give for people with mental health? I mean, I feel like for me, talking to people really, really helps. Yeah. So, what top tips could you give? Um, be empathetic. I think you'll understand that, again, I said this in the last interview, 
just because something might seem small to yourself, so you racist issue might be small to me, you still gotta make sure you understand that and that's obviously a big issue to them if they're saying it, no matter it could be failing a test, it could be losing a loved one, it could be anything, but if it's big to the person, you should never make someone feel small because of that ever. So I think that's the main thing for me, kind of empathy. And speaking to someone, sometimes speaking, sometimes it doesn't, but for a lot of people, speaking to someone just to kind of give weight of your shoulder, you can feel better about yourself, so. Exactly, yeah. and I think journaling was a really nice thing that yeah. I started doing. Yeah, that's um, good. yeah, it was. I think it's really hard with journaling because you have to have a lot of like discipline and being like, I'm going to do it every day. I met someone and they were like, just do, try and set yourself a page a day and just write anything. It's really hard to then just say write anything. Like I actually found it really easy. Like you can just Google like bullet points of things that you might um, put in like a journal. So literally like what you ate today or like just little things kind of like grounds you and like. I guess at some point it would maybe be nice to go back and read. I haven't read it and I just have sort of have it, dump it out, literally whatever I'm thinking or feeling, mm -hmm. put it down mm -hmm. and then close that book. And it's, it, that is also another like way to release it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and think I, it can just help to get those thoughts out sometimes yeah. as well. And I think like uplifting people, I think trying to be, I think as humans we're so like trained in our brains to think as soon as you feel down about something or you start thinking about every little negative thing that's going on in your life. So you're so, so easy to be like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. Whereas I think I try to say to myself before I go to bed or when I wake up the things that I'm grateful for and why I do yeah, have. And then, really yeah, so I think when you do that, you know, obviously everyone's got issues in life no matter what it's going to be. But I think when you start listening, that kind of helps you be like, cool, I'm okay, speak to someone, you can kind of be grateful for what you have got. And I think that's super important mm -hmm. to do. For me as well, I think one of the challenges I had was self awareness because there was a lot of pride going on. And you get that maybe a lot in black men as well in regards to, you kind of like maybe put our shoulders back like, no, we're not going to talk to anyone about this. Mm. We're too prideful. And when I, when I overcame that, that's when I started to seek help and that's when things started to get better. Mm. So one thing I've done was the journaling, I thought it was good, and meditation was amazing. Yeah. Like just to have that stillness and quiet time yeah. in regards to listening to your thoughts and, and hearing what's going on in between your ears and stuff like that and speaking to people. As, you know, just speaking to one person if it is, or even to yourself in the mirror. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at least yeah, getting yeah, it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds strange, but literally, like, I've done a lot of mirror talk. Oh, I, just... <laughs> I think the main thing is, is allowing yourself to feel something. So yeah. for me, when I was 17, I lost my dad. And at the time, I was doing another project, and I kind of didn't give myself the chance to, if you will, feel that emotion. So for me, it kind of hit me a little bit later on. And it wasn't until the first lockdown, I kind of, I feel like with heartache or grief whether it is, you never kind of get over it, but you kind of learn to live with it. And I felt like I was in a good place last year in the first lockdown, even though everyone was going through horrible things, I felt quite happy within myself. And I remember saying to my family, and you know, I feel quite happy. So I think, don't let something, you're allowed to feel something, you're allowed, okay to not be okay sort of thing. So, and that's really key to be able to let yourself feel mm -hmm. something. Yeah, because going back to the, the previous question where I said about, um, obviously with what happened with lockdown, Eating was the toughest because yeah. all the snacks is just like, oh, yeah. yummy. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> I know, getting out of that habit is really hard. <laughs> I was going to go to KFC, yeah. so they had like the KFC recipes with them. Yeah, yeah. Like, this actually yeah. tastes like KFC. Banana bread. <laughs> 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 you couldn't even get delivery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. it's tough. Yeah. Top yeah. marks. Never <laughs> tough. So, you did a lot of travelling on set, but which one was one of your favourites and why? Locations. Yeah. Probably Minster. So, yeah, yeah. We did two days in London and two days away in Minster on Sea. And it was beautiful. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'd like said I'd um, like grown up going, my dad had a caravan there, so I'd grown up going there, and yeah, it was nice to revisit it. It was weird, it was out of season, so yeah. it wasn't like yeah. popping as um, it normally would be. Oh, no, it actually there. does pop there, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 my family went there, I didn't go, my mum and my little brothers went this summer and it was really nice. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Was really yeah. I would like to go back actually, like, yeah. when really it's popping, in the popping season, yeah. I would like to go back actually. Well, I think one day I might have to visit it yes. myself. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not in the wheel film, no, like, no, October, I know, no. it's cold. When you start yeah. on drive, yeah. 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 Gray, but It was cold and windy. It was yeah. very cold. Yeah. Yeah. We were quite exposed where we were though. Yeah, we were in the a beautiful location. Yeah, it was really beautiful. So what inspiring words would you say to people who want to follow in your footsteps and go into the industry? Um, I'd say you've got to remember everyone's journey is different. You know, just because something's going to work for myself doesn't mean it's going to work for someone else. And I think you've got to know you love something and keep working hard no matter what. There's a lot of hours that get put into something. You're going to get a lot of rejection, but a lot of people I might email today and I don't get a reply from, I might hear back from in three years, and that's been the case 
for a lot of things that I've done, I've just kind of been persistent and worked very hard and just kind of focused on what I'm doing. I think it's good to take advice, but also know what sort of person you are and what you want to achieve within your field, if that makes sense. I think don't pay too much attention to what everyone else is doing. Focus on yourself, take advice, and just work hard on what you want to do. You know, you don't have to be the best at it. I was not the best actor or writer or anything like that before, but I really wanted to get into it. I kept working, workshopping people. Oh, wow, now, I mean, <laughs> but like, do you know I mean, you just kind of work hard if you love something. Yeah. I think we'll just keep going for it. So yeah. I think that's the main thing. I think that's, if you love it, then you just got to do it. Exactly. I would give the advice of um, anyone starting up, never despise the days of small beginnings. In regards to, even though it's a little project and you think, oh, it's no significance, those are the things that are going to lead to the next level. So always treat that, I, I would say, like, treat your first like your last, and your last like the first one you sang. So you treat it like it's the first time you're ever going on to set, the yeah. first time you ever do that. You treat it like it's the last time as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you always have that energy and that yeah. enthusiasm to go. And my favourite one I always use is can't stop, won't stop. Once you're on that train, yeah. you're on, can't stop, won't stop. Yeah. Don't exactly. stop for nobody. Like networking yeah. for me was the key. Um, so I graduated in, what was it, 2017? At the University of Brighton, so I did a broadcast media course. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've always been trying to get myself into the industry, but because of lockdown, obviously that's had a bit of an impact. Mm -hmm. But I'm never going to stop. I'm just going to keep pushing and pushing. No, honestly, and honestly yeah. I have had so many rejections in my life. Like, I think it will help, but like, yeah. I've emailed and emailed, and like, people that I work with now, I've emailed when I've been like 15 and never had a response. So I think, as long as you're persistent with it and don't give up, I think, you know, the odds are better if you have like 100 people to email than just mm. the one. You're gonna yeah. get that from someone, yeah. and I think people are willing to give the opportunity. I see what you do, I think you're amazing. Thank and I think you. it's lovely to bring you down today and come to the film, I think it's great. So yeah, keep working hard. So, right, here's a little bit of a cheeky question. <laughs> Were there any pranks on set Ooh. and any funny moments that happened? That's kind of like my kind of territory, isn't it? <laughs> Am I fell into a swamp? Oh, yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I fell into a swamp that when we filmed um, the final scene and then we were walking back and I couldn't see like the like bridge thing and it stunned and I fell into the swamp in front of everyone yeah. on the wrap day. So, oh. yeah, that was embarrassing. Was it a prank that, After. I think there was a prank that the heating wasn't working inside of yeah. <laughs> so Someone set us up on that. Yeah. That was well, a prank. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, 
<laughs> I got quite ill on the third day. Like, yeah, you were. Quite severe, but, like, it also for me, I feel like trying to get through. But because I enjoy talking, I was like, you know, yeah. I'm not gonna try and enjoy it. But um, no, yeah, I was really ill by the end of it all. Like, and to be honest, like it was such a joy and a privilege to like be out creating and that. Like, like any challenges that were were not really challenges because yeah, we were so appreciative. But also, yeah, I think because it was such a lovely like tight crew and cast. If that was a challenge, it was going to be fixed. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot yeah. of problem solving in the film. Yeah, there's always yeah. been problem solving yeah. on, on the film, yeah. isn't it? It's just yeah. how you overcome them, really. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, sometimes like one minute it can be working, the next minute it's not, and then you've got lighting problems. Yeah, like they're very the same. I mean, it was I mean, very safe. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could be filming and the camera battery suddenly turns off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So who was your favourite person to work with? Obviously all of you, oh, or you say about the crew, you know, you've got the mention them as well. Um, you can't say favourite. I can't say favourite, right? but I think someone that I would enjoy seeing work was Mo and Javan, they were the Spark and Gaffer, so they were lighting. Yeah. So obviously yeah. everyone's amazing, yeah. I love everyone. Like, I really think. enjoyed watching our DLP, Jamal. Yeah. Like, Jamal yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the way that he had like, his vision of frame and light and uh, yes. this is how I want things to be. Yeah. I've never seen that before in no. regards of just like the vision of what mm. he's looking for and it's really nice to yeah. to understand different aspects of the film crews. You know, I'm going to say Isla as well because I feel like Isla really was, I, everyone was again but I think everyone was so there for the job if it makes sense. And, no it wasn't a job to them, it was like everyone was, it was just amazing I think every little detail, yeah. everyone was so on it and cared about it so much just as much to me. I've been on stuff before where it is just a job for some people and it is a job. Whereas on this set, I feel like yeah. everyone wanted to be there and they're yeah. working yeah. so hard that I can't. Another favourite person Cash I love working with Cash. Cash. is Kaz Mark. Kaz Mark from the KOE, because I've been there. So shout out to her as well. Shout out to Mark. Literally, I feel like now I've got a name everyone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 But everyone was amazing. Yeah. Like, but, they know yeah. Yeah. We all did become like a family. Like, we did. We were a family. It was the start of loads of us working together continuously. Like, we all worked together on different projects throughout this year so it was a really great experience and so okay if you could work with a famous person actor or actress who would it be <laughs> 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 Right, is he Malcolm and Marie? Yeah, this is it. So that was like an isolation film, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I like to work with Zendaya, Billy Piper, mm. Michaela Cole, or Lenny James. One of those yeah, guys. Yeah, I think I'd say Billy Piper, uh, in terms of directors, Ken Loach, or yeah. um, just really like gritty, something really yeah. real and raw. Um, Michaela Cole. I think any anyone who's creating their own stuff and putting it out there and doing mm. that work. And just like younger creators, that's what's so nice with yeah. working yeah. with well, fresh well. talent and new, yeah, and new people. Well, we've pretty much come to the end, but I just want to say thank you so much for talking to me. It's mm. honestly lovely to meet you all. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, that's right, so let me get this right. So these four walls will be released on Friday the 3rd of October, yes. is that correct? Yes. And it'll be shown on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Google Play, YouTube, Sky Store and Curzon. Yes. Oh, wow. See, I've already said you. Friday the 1st. Friday the 1st, not too long now. Not too long. Yay. Yay. And hopefully everyone should follow you guys as well as me. But yes, mainly you guys. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you so much. And that's all right for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>